Hello, this is Steve Groven, and today's topic is friction. Okay, right now I'm just going to jump right into the definition. A uh, force that opposes motion between two surfaces that are in contact. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this screen completely, and we'll start talking about friction. Um, well, let me talk about a couple of the effects of friction. Now, the first effect, it will slow or stop movement of an object. Let's take, for example, the baseball player sliding into home plate. Eventually, uh, that uh, baseball player will slow down and eventually even stop. Sometimes I've seen a baseball game where the a baseball player has actually stopped before he got to home plate, which, of course, was pretty embarrassing for all involved. Okay, the other thing is uh, friction will create heat. Now, as any scout knows, if you rub two sticks together or if you rub a stick on, to um, on top of another surface, you will eventually generate enough heat to start a fire. Um, I've tried that, not a very easy thing to do, but it is possible. Uh, and the other effect of friction is air resistance. Any pilot knows that, or anybody in a car knows that when you are driving into the wind, well, the plane will, of course, get better lift, or the car will be slowed down a little bit. But their air resistance is one effect of friction. All right, let me continue on. Now, there are two major factors that will affect friction, and this time I'm going to get this uh, pain out of the way completely. Force and roughness. In essence, greater the force, greater the friction. Now, that's because force the force that we're talking about is gravity. As gravity is pushing down on the block, it is pushing the surfaces closer together. You push the surfaces closer together, uh, together you will increase the amount of friction. Now uh, the other one is the rougher the surface the greater the friction as this little diagram de uh, depicts uh, well we've got a picture of a guy skiing down an icy slope and the same picture of the guy trying to ski down a grassy slope. Now uh, anybody that's ever tried that would get what would be called a face plant because the friction will there will be greater friction on the grass as opposed to the friction on the slope. Okay, uh, now both of these values, you notice uh, greater the force, greater the friction, rougher the surface, greater the friction. These values are what's known as directly proportional to each other, which means one goes up and the other one will also go up. Okay, let me move on. There are two different types of friction. There is First, the kinetic friction, and that's friction between moving surfaces. So if you're pushing a cabinet across the floor, for example, you will be causing some sort of a motion, some sort of motion. Now, uh, what's happening here, as I discussed in the previous uh, video, the pushing force is uh, opposing the force of friction. And as long as the cabinet is moving, you have a you have unbalanced forces which are causing the motion of the object. Okay, so sliding, uh, the, there are two different kinds of uh, motion. There's a sliding force, or a sliding friction, um, moving along a surface while keeping physical contact with it, say moving your chest of drawers or moving your couch potato, also in a previous uh, video. There's also rolling friction, moving along a surface by turning over and over about an axis. Wheels. Moving along wheels. Now there is still a little bit of friction on the wheels, but there will be considerably less friction moving over wheels than there, are, than there is uh, moving just uh, along the surface. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the other type of friction, which is called static friction. Friction between non-moving surfaces. If you've ever pulled against an object that was just too heavy to move, you will be noticing static friction. Because if the object is not moving and yet you're still pushing or pulling against the surface but it's not moving, then there is enough friction between the surfaces to keep that object in place. Static friction. A place where this is very useful would be in your car brakes. You're on a hill, you got your car parked, and you have the brakes on. The car does not slide because of static friction. 
If, on the other hand, you had an icy surface, then that car would move. Now, if the car starts moving, or if the, uh, the chest of drawers starts moving, then, uh, the kinetic, then the static friction is suddenly going to disappear. Now, another interesting thing about static friction is that it is always going to be greater than kinetic friction. You push on the drawers or you push on the car. Once you get the drawer or the shift robe or whatever it is that you're pushing, once you get it to move, it's a lot easier to keep it moving than it was to overcome that friction in the first place. Okay, let me move on. So, friction. This is something can be, that can be either helpful or harmful. Let's take a look at a couple possibilities. Um, harmful examples. Well, obviously, rug burn. I mentioned face planting a little earlier. So, plant your face in the rug. You will get a very nasty scar, most likely, or just a nice little burn. Okay, um, wind burned. Another interesting little example. Uh, snow skiers or water skiers are most likely going to experience this kind of friction. Metal parts rubbing against each other. Now, if you notice in my uh, little diagram, let me see if I can make that a little bigger. Okay, there we go. Okay, if you notice little metal shavings uh, down in the side here. Whoops, I'm sorry, I can't draw right here today. But, um, well, uh, metal parts rubbing against each other will cause metal shavings to come out of the workings. And that normally is a bad thing, especially in your car. Okay, uh, this picture is a little big, so I'm going to get this out of the way for the next one. So um, how can we reduce friction? Well, lubricant is a very good possibility. WD-40, favorite amongst most people. Wheels. As I mentioned, rolling friction is quite a bit less than sliding friction. So put wheels on it, and you can move it around. That's why most people or uh, some companies make products that have actual wheels on them. A cushion of air is another really good way of reducing friction. Anybody who's ever played air hockey will notice how intense the game is, mainly because of the low friction surface on the table. Okay, now let's move on to the harmful, I'm sorry, the helpful examples of friction. Tires on surfaces. If you recall a picture earlier of the car on the hill, that's a good case of a, car, of a helpful example of friction. If you did not have the friction on the surface of the road or between the road and the tires of the car, there is no way that car would move. Okay, um, brake pads. Very helpful on cars if you didn't have the friction against uh, the metal parts, against the metal parts and the brake pads, there was no way you could, well, no easy way to stop cars. And another good example is basically any place humans or animals will walk. This was kind of a fun picture to find. Okay, so how do we increase friction? Well, uh, in winter climates, uh, let's see, this is a, not my pickup truck, but a couple years ago, or a few years ago, I had a pickup truck that for some reason had uh, only two-wheel drive, no four-wheel drive, so that was impossible to use in the wintertime. The only way we could ever get, oops, sorry about that, the only way I could get that to go was to pile a bunch of sandbags in the back of the truck, so adding force increased the friction of the truck. Okay, again, in a winter climate, we need to salt the roads in order to, uh, to increase the friction of the roads. Otherwise, the icy roads would be impossible to drive on. So another good example is to use uh, salt or even gravel on the roads to increase the roughness of the road, which increases the friction. And strangely enough, another way to increase the uh, friction in any kind of system is to increase the surface contact. Okay, let's take, for example, bicycle tires. Now, any mountain biker will tell you that the tire on the right, I'm sorry, the tire on the left is the best one for bicycling on a mountain, uh, mountainous or uh, uh, mountainous terrain. Now, the reason being that the studded tires are able to dig into the tire into the dirt a lot better than smooth. 
However, if you're biking on a road, then the better example is the tire on the right because the smooth surface of the tire is actually going to increase the surface contact of the tire on the road. So in bicycle tires, unlike car tires, you're actually better off with a smooth tire when you're driving on the road. And as it turns out, that is all I have for now. Thanks for listening.